for you as an innovation platform, um, you actually function in some ways very similar to a VC because what you need is you need good deal flow, right? You need to be in touch with lots of universities, startups, corporates, and you kind of need to be recognized as the place to go when it comes to facilitating innovation. So what is some advice you might have on, you know, how to, how to build that deal flow, how to establish yourself as the go-to player in the innovation business? So uh, this is going to recall to what I said earlier, like you need to be able to communicate very clearly what's the value that you're delivering it. And you're going to be able to position yourself as the, uh, as the one that is good at you know, getting things done. If I'm looking for something and I have this player in front of me and have a very clear understanding that I can get the job done by this guy, of course I want to work with this company or I want to work with this, uh, with this team. So this is really important, being able to communicate the value. Marketing is a way on how, on how we are able to communicate and deliver a, a message. Yeah. First of all, we need to be clear on what was the value out there. And of course, I mean, in a, in a market such as like China, you need to be able, like again, to stay active. So for example, like all this, uh, conferences that we are we, we are involved and all this uh, all this you know business occasions of course are the good opportunities for you to uh, bring your name out and and somehow again also playing with this word of mouth and having the message delivered mm -hmm. but again everything starts with the value that you are delivering if you have a good uh, case studies if you have um, if you have successful, you know, value delivered, uh, yeah. I don't think that that is a big, uh, big problem. Yeah. And are there differences in, you know, how you approach this, like positioning yourself, keeping up this deal flow in China versus rest of the world? Like, does it work differently? Maybe because connections might be more important here, or kind of. The, the whole concept of guanxi that's so difficult for foreigners to understand. Are there nuances to that? Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, of course, there's a big difference. Uh, if you are in a Western world, you must have, for example, a website, you must have a very active, uh, a very active uh, social media uh, presence an online presence, I think, but in China, everything really you know, works very different. And you mentioned this. Um, if you are, if you start with a product, you're doing well, you deliver what you're asked, you know, to deliver, again, there is this sort of worth of mouth that are, uh, there are players that get to, you know, they introduce you to some, some other players and some other clients, and then you start by delivering some value, and it doesn't mean that you need to be paid for that. Mm. So if you're able to give, and you are able to you show yourself as available, you know, to yeah. understand what's the problem out there and see how you can possibly support with the value that you're delivering you know, because you don't have to do everything, you know, you don't have to tailor made solution for yeah. everyone. But if you are available to listen and understand, oh yeah, like, you know what, with the thing that we do, we could support in that way. And then, of course, having the possibility to talk to different, you know, government agencies and, uh, you know, corporations and academic institutions, of course, that really facilitates everything. So, in China, the concept of Guanxi, the connection, the resources, and be able to maintain those resources, actually, is quite, quite, quite important.